Hello, welcome back to another episode of Audit Trails. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit different uh, topic. I know we used to talk about the NIST 853 controls, more specifically access control, um, but we're going to switch gears a little bit in this episode. So today we're going to be discussing NIST 800-171 and CMMC. FIPS validated cryptography. So what does this mean? Specifically, we're going to be focusing on control 3.13.11 within NIST 800-171 or practice SC3.177 within CMMC. So as you know, once you get to like level 3 compliance within the CMMC, it is it does include all controls within NIST 800-171. So, so they do read the same way. Um, the descriptions are very similar, if not identical. There's just a little bit of different clarification within the documents and kind of what the requirements are when you are implementing um, such framework. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the description of this control reads that you must employ FIPS validated cryptography when used to protect the confidentiality of CUI, so controlled unclassified information. So, like I said, it does read the same way in both documents, but there's still a lot of information to take from this control. So, what's the scope? How do we be compliant? Um, what does FIPS validated cryptography mean? There's a bunch of different stuff that we're going to jump into in this episode of Audit Trails. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, like I said, there is a little bit of different clarification with each of the documents. So, if we're going to look at NIST 800-171, the description is going to read like it is on the screen here. So cryptography can be employed to support many security solutions, including the protection of CUI, the provision of digital signatures, and the enforcement of information separation when authorized individuals have the necessary clearances for information but lack the necessary formal access approvals. So that's a mouthful there, as, as you guys can see here. Uh, cryptography can also be used to support random number generation, hash generation, um, and then this is the part that we're really going to focus on in this video here. So cryptographic standards include FIPS validated cryptography and or NSA approved cryptography. We're going to ignore that last part. We're really going to focus on that FIPS validated part here. So if we look at the control within the CMMC document, there is a little bit more validation here. So it's pretty much just telling you that you can only use cryptography validated through the NIST cryptographic module validation program to protect the confidentiality of CUI. And we'll talk about what the NIST cryptographic module validation program is a little bit later in this video. Um, but this is very important because like I said earlier, we're going to talk about scope. So what is the scope for this control? Because as you know, implementing FIPS validated cryptography across the entire environment um, is often not practical and it could be very expensive as well. So it's really important to notice that the scope is here for CUI information. That is the scope. You have to protect devices that may have CUI on them. You have to protect the CUI information with FIPS validated cryptography. That is the scope here. So if you have devices or systems in your environment that don't have any CUI data on them, don't have any CUI data being transmitted through them, then you would not have to apply FIPS validated cryptography. You should still use one of the recommended algorithms or um, crypt, uh, cryptography standards, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next one. In the next slide here. So what is FIPS? It's a term that I've been saying a lot already. We're just jumping into this video a little bit. So there's a, several FIPS publications out there. I think there's about nine or so, give or take. But specifically, FIPS 140 covers cryptographic module and testing requirements for both hardware and software. So uh, it's used in designing, implementing, and operating specific cryptographic modules. So the security requirements uh, can cover the module interfaces, the software, firmware security, operating environments. There's a whole plethora of things that a cryptographic module um, and their security requirements actually cover. So FIPS 140 does outline four different levels of security. As the level increases, 
Um, they're not necessarily building on top of one another, but a higher level does go through like additional testing for the for a specific use case. So um, what's applicable at like a level two of FIPS 140 may not be applicable to a level four of FIPS 140 module. So they're validated um, at each different level based on how well they fulfill the needs of a specific scenario. So it's kind of vague, kind of high level, but um, level one is the lowest level of security. It just covers like basic security features within cryptographic modules. Um, then you jump into like level two, which kind of improves on the physical security aspect of a cryptographic module, followed by level three, which is kind of, it's level two, but just enhanced in, in different ways. So um, typically when you purchase a product or something like that, it, it's going to be like level three. And then, like I said, level four is the highest. The higher you go, the more secure it is and, and the more testing that it, it does have to go through. So FIPS validated versus FIPS compliant. So this is the meat of the video here. This is really what I wanted to jump into the most. So you'll see when you're purchasing tools or looking at different software throughout the industry, you're gonna see a lot of different terms. Two of the main ones when it comes to cryptography, you're gonna see FIPS validated versus FIPS compliant. So what does that mean? So FIPS validation means that a product has gone undergone testing and passed a detailed conformance by an accredited national lab. So NIST actually has, I believe it's about 13 laboratories that will actually test the algorithms, make sure that it does meet all of their security standards as outlined within FIPS 140. And they will say every part of this module is FIPS validated. And then you'll also see FIPS compliant. So FIPS compliance means that different components of a product have received validation, but the product in its entirety has not passed testing or has not been tested at all. So they may have parts of their application that are FIPS validated, but they didn't get the back end or, or maybe the interface or something like that tested. The, that means that the entire product is not FIPS validated. So it's very important to know that they are not the same thing. So FIPS 140-2 actually calls out specific security requirements for a cryptographic module utilized within a security system. And like I said, that all gets published by NIST. So it actually examines the cryptographic modules. It'll examine the algorithms within the cryptographic component. It'll build on the software component and it, it does take into account like physical security as well there's a lot of stuff that actually goes into effect when uh, goes into consideration when they're testing these modules that being said uh testing obviously does come with some costs and and it is a very rigorous progress so some companies will take that little shortcut and say that they're fips compliant because because compliant does, like I said, it means that some parts of their product or, or their application is utilizing a FIPS validated uh, module, but they're not using FIPS validated products. So the whole thing is not validated. So you can have prog products on the market that might have validated software and components, but like I said, that entire product is not validated. Alrighty. So how do we how do we reach compliance? So as an auditor, when you're going to test the specific control, like I said, we're really looking for a few different things. So what kind of algorithms, what kind of cryptographic modules are you using? What kind of policies do you have in place? What kind of practices do you currently have in place? What are you already doing to achieve this? And like I said, a very important part of this control is that scope. So you have a formal plan to implement the encryption around CUI, controlled unclassified data. So that should include what cryptographic systems you're using and most importantly, that they meet the CMVP compliance standard. And then additionally, just with cryptography overall, it's important that you have good key management practices in place because if you're not protecting your keys, then I mean, obviously the cryptography is not um, very safe or, or secure for that matter. So for level three compliance within CMMC, 
like I said, we're looking for those policies, those practices, that formal plan. But what are we going to look for specifically? So we're going to look for a system and communications protection policy that should address your cryptographic protection. It should also be mentioned within uh, your program's documentation. So a system security plan or a system design summary or something of that nature. We're also going to be looking for what specific modules you're using that should include validated validated modules and the list of cryptographic modules um, we're also going to interview specific personnel and kind of make sure that these practices are being carried out and, and more often than not they'll actually ask for proof of that whether it's like audit records or, or system audit logs or or any sort of documentation that your organization may use to kind of notate these practices and then lastly we'll probably test a specific uh, cryptographic module. There's a lot of different uh, resources out there that you can kind of use to test it, but each of these modules, uh, they should be used to protect CUI at rest, in transit, and like I said, FIPS validated is the key here. So FIPS validated uh, means that the entire module, the entire application or, or product, whatever it may be, has been validated and tested by NIST and kind of one of their accredited laboratories. So other cryptography cannot be used because it has not been tested. So especially within CU, when protecting CUI, that, that's the key here. Alrighty, so let's, one more point I wanted to touch on before we jump into resources is, uh, like I said, FIPS validated cryptography is required when you want to protect defense information or, or CUI something of that nature. Encryption used for other purposes, such as within the application or anything like that, um, do not necessarily have to be FIPS validated. But like I said, I, I personally recommend that you use a FIPS recommended algorithm or module. Um, it's just when you are defining a specific scope for what has to be FIPS validated, it's anything that has or touches CUI. That's important. So this was a long video, a um, lot of information. Like I said, there's a huge difference between FIPS validated and FIPS compliant. Um, validated is that it's a tested module by NIST and one of their accredited laboratories. Compliant is bits and pieces of a specific product or application, if you will, are FIPS validated, just not the entire thing. It's important to notate that huge difference. So let's talk about a little, talk about the resources available to you um, what you can find on the public web here that I will also put the links of these in the description so that you can easily access them. So the Cryptographic Algorithm Validation Program. So this program provides validation testing of approved algorithms and their components. So Cryptographic Algorithm Validation, in the name of this resource here, that is a prerequisite for a cryptographic module to obtain FIPS validation. So they have to validate that the algorithm used within this cryptographic module is actually valid and secure before, that, before the module itself can get fully FIPS validated. So the algorithm implementation obviously has to meet all of the requirements outlined within FIPS 140-2, but it's also important to note that a product or implementation does not meet FIPS 140-2 module val validation simply by implementing an approved security function and acquiring validations for each of the implemented algorithms. So it's important, like I said, use this resource. I'll drop the link in the description so that you guys can go in there and kind of poke around because there's plenty of algorithms that are validated and they kind of break them out and into different types like block ciphers and stuff like that. The next resource we're going to discuss is cryptographic standards and guidelines. So this includes um, primitives, algorithms, schemes, and stuff like that that are described through all of the NIST documents or the FIPS documents, stuff like that. Um, it's just really a document library. Very important and useful information in here. Um, there's plenty of stuff to go off of in there. And then the last one, the CMVP, Cryptographic Module Validation Program. So 
The goal of this is to promote the use of validated cryptography, cryptographic modules. Um, and there is testing available on this site as well. So they continue to validate cryptographic modules for FIPS 140-2. And they're going to continue to do that until September 22nd of 2021. That being said, as of September 22nd of 2020, so a few months from today, previous, they have started validating cryptographic modules that are complete that are validated and compliant with FIPS 140-3. So not to panic yet, you can still utilize modules conformed to FIPS 140-2. Those will continue to be accepted through September 22nd, 2026. So you have six years, just shy of six years to continue utilizing those modules. Um, but by then, the CMVP will place FIPS 140-2 validated modules on a historical list, and you will have to start uh, considering migration to FIPS 140-3. So, like I said, they have started validating those now. Um, once you, those modules do get validated, they get placed on an active list for five years. Um, and this list is maintained by the CMVP, which is a joint effort between a few different um, cybersecurity agencies and, and countries uh, throughout the U.S. and Canada. So that being said, uh, that's all I have for this episode of Audit Trails. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, we touched a lot of information, uh, difference between FIPS validated or FIPS compliant. What we're really looking for when we do an audit on FIPS and kind of what we're going to be testing for to make sure that you're utilizing FIPS validated cryptography. And then more importantly, the scope. Got to protect that CUI. Anything else? Just utilize a NIST recommended uh, cryptography module, cryptographic module or anything like that. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just stay tuned to our channel on YouTube for more episodes of in-detail cryptographic videos, more specifically specific examples and kind of how this could apply to you and your organization. Thanks.